people, welcome back. Welcome back to the podcast. This is Third Eye Sifes. It is a Third Eye Cipher, a podcast where we talk about self-realization, personal development, law of attraction, manifestation, esoteric knowledge, extraterrestrials, conspiracy theories, Everything, everything under the sun. Okay, well, not everything under the sun, but everything in that realm, everything in the spiritual realm, and everything in the physical realm. Okay, not everything in the physical realm, and not everything in the spiritual realm. Not really everything at all. Just just some stuff, some main topics. <laughs> some of those main topics uh, mentioned. I'm Natalia, your host. And it is Saturday. It is Saturday, and I am doing the podcast. Usually we do it on Friday, but that just did not happen yesterday. I apologize for that. I also didn't advertise last week's episode, so half of the people don't even know that episode is up. What did I even talk about? Did you? What did I? <laughs> what did I even talk about last week? Let's see. I have to literally check the freaking name of the episode. Oh, Facing Imposter Syndrome. Wow, that shit blew up quickly. Oddly enough. Maybe people thought it was yesterday's episode. Um, anyways, that was kind of my deal. That was kind of what happened. I got some um, adventure music in the background because uh, today we are talking about how I got to where I am. And not to say that I'm at the end of my, my travels, my journey. I'm... I, I honestly, I'm still in the beginning. I feel like I probably will always still be in the beginning. Um, but then I, I feel like I kind of like compare it to my age. So like, I think maybe when I'm 30 or 40, I'd be like, all right, I'm halfway through the journey. <laughs> but then again, that means I'm expecting to die at what, like 80? Okay, well, no, I feel like I started my journey. Nah, my journey just started when I was born, honestly, but no, I, this is definitely the beginning because it's just gonna, it's just gonna get crazier. It's gonna, it's been crazy, but it's just gonna get crazier and better. And I think that once I like reach peak, whatever, <laughs> whatever I consider peak to be, that's halfway. And then the rest of my life is just like on cruise control from there. And then that would be, I guess, the the decline. Well, not the decline. I feel like there will be no... The decline will happen very fast. It'll, it'll be like within a week of my death. But I don't think... Man, I don't know. It depends on how I die. <laughs> We're getting a little bit too, too deep in there. I have some conspiracies about the way I'm going to die. Um, we're not talking about that today. But I think that... Um, yeah... Yeah, I mean, we just started the journey, but that's what we're talking about this week is how I got to the point that I'm at right now and um, sort of where I'm going. I mean, like, if you listen to this regularly, you kind of know where I'm going. I kind of don't know where I'm going. I have an intention and I'm walking this path road, but I, ultimately I don't know where it leads. I have an idea of where it leads. And I have an intention on what I want it to lead to, but you know, I can't predict the future. I can't predict the the laws of nature and what the universe actually has in store for me. So I'm not, I'm not, I don't have any expectations, but I do have intentions. Um, but mostly about my journey and it's mostly to inspire you to do what the hell you want to do and know that you have the ability of achieving what you want to the bass on my stereo is very intense right now i think i raised it up for a certain song earlier because the bass just kicks on that song and i need like extra bass for that song so i think that I, I feel like the vibrations of the jungle running through me right now haku is laying on my lap while i do this episode i feel like the vibrations are scaring her that might be why she's laying here um but yeah, okay, what the hell? We just like started. Um, welcome to the podcast. This is Third Eye Sifes. And yeah, I hope you enjoy I hope you enjoy this podcast. If this is your first time listening, welcome. Welcome. This is a pretty sick podcast. 
listen to other episodes. You'll enjoy it. Trust me. I promise. You'll never look back. You'll never look back. There's only forward. There's only here and forward. Um, <laughs> and yeah, thank you for being here. If you just tell me how you found this podcast, if this is your first time, like DM me on Instagram. My Instagram's Natalia of Earth. DM me, say, hey, I found your podcast through blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, oh, that is sick. Uh, yeah, that's it, pretty much. Um, <laughs> no, I'm really interested to find out how people find out about this podcast. And I don't know. DM me anyways. DM me anything. Tell me, like, you're fat. Like, I don't know. You can say whatever. <laughs> don't call me fat, but <laughs> I don't know why I thought about that. Um, just whatever. Hit me up. Hit me up, people. Um, but yeah, that's it. We're gonna, we're, let's, let's, let's get into this. This is, a uh, this is Third Eye Sice, baby. Third Eye Sice. Third Eye Sice. are back welcome welcome to the podcast thank you for that short break of of uh what is it advertisements and one more advertisement for you this podcast is sponsored by the writings of natalia my own personal company and brand the writings of natalia is your place to remember your spiritual nature whether it be through my art and my writing or through my services, my consultations, my mentoring, my card readings, or through my clothing line, through the shirts, and through the even more things that I'm about to drop fairly soon, hint, hint, and through intentional journals, products, everything, everything that you can imagine to help expand your mind and your awareness and help you really embrace and indulge in your spiritual nature, really. Constant reminders, that's what it is. Your place to remembering your spiritual nature. Things to have in your life to constantly remind you of who you truly freaking are, which is divinity itself, which is the universe itself. So that is what this podcast is sponsored by, The Writings of Natalia. You can find it on Instagram at The Writings of Natalia. And yeah, you can go to thewritingsofnatalia.com. You could shop, you can read, you can listen, you can look at really cool things, and you can book services with me. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, mentoring, and we could just do a single call. We can do a whole program if you choose. Um, or we could just do a card reading. I do a lot of card readings for people and they actually really help. So something to think about. It's not anything crazy. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you for listening to that. And thank you for checking out the writings of Natalia. It is the most upcoming thing ever. And like about five years from now, you're going to be like, man, I remember when that shit was just starting. And now look at it now. Okay, that's it. All right, so welcome. This freaking flute music, whatever the hell. <laughs> um, hi. Hi, welcome. How have you been? How have you been? I'm sorry I didn't do the podcast yesterday. I, I don't, man, I have an issue with waking up. Like, I don't know what it is. And I think, you know, there was a full moon yesterday. Were you guys feeling that? Full moons are always my most energy draining days. I'm usually so tired on like when there's a full moon. Like I, I went to sleep early. I could barely wake up yesterday. And I think the eclipse was like in the morning or it was like the night before or something, but I just could not wake up for the life of me. And then I had to run to work in the morning. So I couldn't even, I couldn't even record. And then after work, couldn't even do it then. So I was like, you know what? I go to work later on Saturday, so I might as well just do it in the morning. Not to say that it's morning, because I have to go like sell some clothes, even though they didn't buy my clothes. I had to end up donating them. Um, small, small sneak peek into the life of Natalia at the moment. Um, I also posted something on my story yesterday where it was like, the grind be like, and 
the girl like literally comes in and like throws herself on the bed because she just like got back from whatever she was doing like tired like oh and as soon as she lays down the alarm goes off she has to get back up and leave again that's literally the story of my life lately i've been working two jobs this is my first time ever working two jobs at the same time um the the other time that i sort of worked two jobs at the same time it wasn't anything serious it was just one day out of the week i worked at the yoga studio um, I regularly worked at the restaurant and then um, one day a week I would work at the yoga studio and that only lasted for like a couple of weeks, barely, and that wasn't, that wasn't anything. Now I'm working two jobs in the same day, so as soon as I get back from one job I have to run to the other job and it's like literally almost every day, I work on the weekends now and the grind is real right now and the grind is only real right now because I have to catch up with my stupidity I, I like took a I have not to say that taking a break is stupid um, it was actually very productive and helpful but uh it drained me a bit financial wise so I'm, I'm trying to catch back up to where I originally was <laughs> um, but other than that 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 will surely end soon I'm sure and we'll be we'll be right back on it so ain't nothing to, ain't nothing to worry about okay anyways um, announcements, let's get into this episode, and to start off, the announcements, one, check out the writings of Natalia, that's number one announcement, I just dropped some super sick journals, uh, and these t-shirts, and I'm gonna drop something super sick soon, so look out for that, perfect for the freaking holidays, guys, you don't wanna, like, shop some BS-ish, and shop small, shop local, support your local spiritual mentor and advisor, and purchase some sick ass ish, all right? Um, second announcement is, guys, I'm making a freaking TikTok, okay? I've been talking a lot of crap about this, and I've been so hesitant to do this. Even when I started the process of signing up to make a TikTok, like downloading the app, putting in my email, like whatever, even the process of that, I was just like, oh my god. And I'm sure a lot of you are on TikTok, and I'm sure you enjoy it, and that's great. I don't. <laughs> um, but it's a very smart business move on my end, and you know me, you know, I'm all about that in business, so... I did it, but I then I, I kind of messed up too. <laughs> like I, I did it, and then I was like, "Fuck it, I'll just put like whatever year." It it asked me for my birthday, okay, and then it said, "This doesn't matter, right?" And I was like, "Okay, it doesn't matter." So I put my birthday year as 2020, and I was like, "You're underage. You can't do anything on this app except post things for yourself." And I was just like, "What?" So then I had to email them, and then I made I tried to make a second account because then I was like, all right, whatever, I'll just abandon this first account, like deactivate it, and then I'll make a new account with the new birthday. But apparently like it saved my phone IP address or whatever, so it knew that whoever was using this phone was born in fucking 2020, okay? But 2020, what, I'm a two year old? Freaking making a TikTok this doesn't make any damn sense. So it, it didn't even ask me for my birthday. It just automatically like made my account private and it was just like, oh, you're still underage. And I was like, what? So now I had two accounts. I just recently had TikTok, I had to email them to correct my birthday on the first account, but I don't even think I want to use that account because I made a, the original account that I made was the writings of Natalia, and I was like, whatever, I'll just make one under Natalia of Earth, and then it, that didn't work, so then I got my birthday to fix on the writings of Natalia, but then I was thinking about it, I was like, man, I really, I, I just want my TikTok under Natalia of Earth, like, whatever, that's already my thing, I could still post the Rise of Natalia stuff on there, I, I feel like if I have an Instagram, I mean, not an Instagram, oh my god, TikTok specifically, I can't even believe I'm talking about TikTok right now, um, specifically for the writings of Natalia, then it's only gonna limit me, so, mentally, like, that's just, like, a me thing, so I was like, whatever, Natalia Earth, I'll put whatever is on there because I just do whatever the freak I want. So now I had to email them again and then ask them to fix my birthday on the Natalia of Earth account. So maybe that will be up soon and whatever, follow me on it or subscribe. I don't know how that works. Um, <laughs> fuck, I, I really don't want to. And you know what? I feel like it's my resistance to it that's gonna make it like not do anything because I'm so resistant to it. So I, I just have to release my resistance. This is key, guys. Release my resistance and see like what happens. It can bring me opportunities. It can bring me a lot of people to 
see my brand and I could work with more people. Um, yeah, so anyways, that's second announcement is that I'm, I'm making a TikTok. It's in the works, okay? <laughs> Obviously, it didn't work out the first time, so we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Number three announcement is... Dun, dun, dun. Is there a number three announcement? I don't think so. Um, I thought of something, and then I completely forgot about it, so let's just freaking move on. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I can't think of anything. Okay. It's the holidays, guys. It's the holidays. And... I can't believe it's the freaking holidays. Like, where did this year go? I feel like this entire year went to me working. Because that's what I was doing mainly when I was working. Well, I still work for the yoga studio, but I was, like, working intensely for the yoga studio. Now, not so much. But I, that took up, like, most of this year. That's usually what happened. Work takes up most of your year. School too, like if you go to school, school takes up most of your year and you're like, where the hell did the whole year go? But school's more fun than work. You don't really have to do as much stuff in school than you, as you do in work. Depending on what kind of school, like college might be different. You probably gotta do like hella work in college. Not interested in doing a lot of work, even though at work, you do a lot of work, but I don't know, I enjoy working for some reason, I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, so somebody told me happy holidays. I, I didn't even consider it to be the holidays, but then I kind of like started seeing some holiday decorations and I was like, wow, people are like preparing early because it's still like, well, I mean, it is the end of November. We're entering December, I guess. Yeah, this is like, yeah, it's the holidays pretty much. <laughs> somebody was like, oh, thank you. Happy holidays. And I was like, fuck, it's the holidays. <laughs> I guess. Now, I'm usually excited about the holidays. I will when it gets more close to Christmas. Um, I'm not a big Thanksgiving enthusiast, given uh, my ancestral background. No, I'm joking. That's actually not why. No, I'm joking. Well, maybe. <laughs> I said no, I'm joking twice. No, I don't know. I, I think I used to like Thanksgiving. Maybe. I don't really know. I don't... I don't remember being a fan of it i remember liking to eat food but i don't know i have a weird relationship with food i think my relationship with food gets weirder as i get older like i just don't i'm not a fan of food anymore and i think that's like it's a combination of like overindulge like the awareness of indulgence and then also like knowing that like monks and swamis or whatever, and they can meditate for like months in a cave without eating anything. And it works, they can survive. And that's awesome, that's awesome. But then people are like, what do you mean? Food is delicious, it tastes so good. And like, taste, taste, taste so good, delicious. That's all sensory, sensual gratification. I'm not a fan of pleasing my senses. I mean, when I'm, involved with the physical i mean i'm always involved with the freaking physical i'm in a physical vessel but like when i'm not thinking about it like things that feel good like oh this feels good or but i just i don't like feeding the senses i don't this past week on dow tuesdays i go i live stream on the writings of natalia instagram every tuesday and do dow tuesdays we go verse by verse of the dow day ching and this past tuesday was about um depriving or starving the senses those who indulge in the senses weaken it kind of it not kind of it weakens the mind basically and yeah i don't know ever since i i, I learned about sensual gratification and I don't know, food just didn't seem as pleasing to me anymore. And then like, I also, I don't wanna say I have digestion problems, but I have like a low or like small internal, like digestive fire. I forgot what that's called in Ayurveda. Um, but I don't digest as easily as other people do. So like people could just like eat a bunch of random crap and it's fine. But then if I do that, like I basically look pregnant for days on end because it's all in my stomach and it's terrible if you know how like 
bad it is to keep stuff in your gut. It's basically like keeping poison within you and it makes you tired and all this crap. And like, it's super hard for me to digest what was until I started becoming more aware of what I'm eating. But then even so now I have to be like picky with what I eat because I'm like, man, no, I'm not gonna digest that good. Like it's annoying, like it's too much work for me. And then I also don't enjoy cooking, which is like completely incomprehensible for my boyfriend. Like he has fun cooking. Like I know this is like a lot of things, like people enjoy cooking, like that's a thing. I don't. <laughs> I cook because I have to, like because I have to survive to eat or I have to eat to survive. So I have to cook. I don't enjoy cooking. I feel like it's a waste of time. Like I wish I could just like air feed because I could be doing something productive and I'm here fucking spending a whole hour cooking a damn meal. That's only gonna, what, feed me for that moment. Then I'm gonna be hungry like in a few hours and I gotta cook again. Like it doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense for me. So I don't enjoy cooking. I don't enjoy, I like food shopping for some reason, I, I, but I don't like, I don't like shopping. I wanna say like, I might enjoy food shopping because I like shopping, but I don't know. I just like, I like food shopping, but then like, I just random food shop. Like I don't shop like, oh, I'm gonna cook this and these recipes and I need these ingredients. Like I just buy whatever. And then I'm like, what the hell am I gonna make with all this random crap? Like, like cereal, freaking granola bars. No, I'm just, <laughs> I actually have cereal. I barely eat cereal, but I have cereal that's been there for like, Ever, and it's still it's still good anyways I'm not gonna tell you what the hell's in my fridge but anyways the point of the freaking story is I, I have a weird relationship with food and I don't enjoy eating that much I don't enjoy cooking I don't enjoy being full I don't enjoy being hungry I don't enjoy I don't enjoy food that much if I could survive without eating I would love that that would be great I don't know how I started talking about this but I don't, yeah, I don't know how I started talking about this <laughs> anyways. So uh, let's get to the freaking episode. Um, I was trying to find the, the source of that and I couldn't. So let's just freaking start talking about how I got to where I am. So where am I first? Let's start with where am I? Well, in this case of me explaining how I got to where I am, where I am I would consider is um, I don't know what you would consider like financially independent. Financially independent to me is, well, okay, I kind of take financially independent into two different forms. So the first form would be financially free, which is where you don't rely on other people. I don't want to say sources, but people for your income. Um, okay, so I guess I only take it in one way, but one way could be from jobs and then so that to me that's financially free like you don't get your money from working a job for working for someone else and then there's the other form that i take that you're, you're not like a dependent of your parents or your family like your family gives you money your family feeds you or, or things like that so in my case i'm financially independent where my family does not support me i support myself um this isn't uncommon but I know a lot of people who are older than me and aren't financially independent or still rely on their family for shelter or things like that. So where I am is I'm 23 years old. I just turned 23 this year in June. I am originally from the East Coast. I moved out to California by myself while I was with my boyfriend at the time, ex-boyfriend, um, but not that that really helped any <laughs> that didn't really do anything um but i moved out to the west coast of california basically by myself i have no family out here i did it with the only money that i had i hadn't been supported by my parents ever since i left home i left home when was i 18. after i turned 18 i left home and I was financially independent since then, since I left home. So I was working for myself, staying with uh, family friends, and then eventually like moving to like a room and paying for that and stuff. Um, but anyways, not to get into the whole story yet. So financially independent from my family, I provide my own shelter, I provide my own food, I provide my own healthcare, etc. I have a cat that I provide for, I have a little, 
dependent. She is my dependent, literally, because I support her, <laughs> even though I can't claim her on taxes. Um, and yeah, and I want to say that I'm on the rise because this is where I do think that I am in the point of my life where I'm on the rise to becoming financially free. So this is not working for somebody else and having my own sources of income, which are kind of like my own sources through my business, through whatever services I provide. Um, and on the way to being a multimillionaire, ideally. So there's that. I have my own apartment. I don't have any roommates. Um, I manage a yoga studio, so I'm the general manager of a yoga studio, which, I'll, I'll just leave that at that. Um, <laughs> and then, what else? Yeah, I live in a super rich neighborhood, not to say that I'm, uh, I have like one of these super rich houses yet, but, and even if I did, I don't think I'll have one here. Um, but I live in a super wealthy neighborhood and I have my own apartment, I pay my own rent, pay my own utilities. I, yeah, I manage a yoga studio. I'm on the way to become a multimillionaire. I'm like on the climb, on the rise of that. And I've most, I wanna say 99% manifested all of this. And it may not seem like a lot, but this all happened within uh, 19, 20, 21, 22, about five years. And I mean, that's a pretty long time, but it doesn't feel like a pretty long time. And my point in saying this is that there's people that I know who are older than me, who still live at home, not to say that's bad, but I'm saying, I'm just trying to tell you how I got to where I am. So I know people that are older than me that still live at home, their parents still provide them shelter. They work jobs, but they mostly use that money to, I guess, like go out and like buy clothes, buy food out, things like that. So not paying too many bills. They do have cars, so I guess they pay those bills, um, but I don't know if they pay rent or anything like that. Um, yeah, maybe their family still provides health care. And yeah, I mean, it takes a lot to freaking live by yourself and then even afford a place by yourself. And then especially to be in a good work position, I wanna say, because people are still like employees of people and I'm still freaking an employee, what the hell? Um, but rather than like general employees, I guess you could say. I don't know. Let's just let's just get into the free story. So to start off, I want to say that I've always tried to start my own business since I was younger. I tried starting like a babysitting business or like a pet sitting business and I made these hand and this was in maybe middle school, the begin like maybe 6th grade and I would make these pamphlets, like handwritten pamphlets of the services that I would provide. Like I would watch your kids for this long, for this price or whatever. And I would go door to door and ask if they needed my services. And I would hand them a flyer and give them my phone number, my email, I guess. I, I know I did have an email, but I don't remember checking my email back then. Um, oh, I kind of remember checking my email back then. Anyway, so I that that never worked. Nobody ever did that. Like nobody ever called me for that or whatever. Uh, but then I think, I don't remember the random stuff that I tried starting in middle school. I was always selling things online that my parents didn't know. Like I would take things around the house and sell it online to make money. And I don't even know what I would spend the money on. Probably like candy or like, not candy, but like kid stuff. I don't know what the hell I bought back then. So that and then okay towards high school when I got towards high school I I've always made jewelry since I was super young and I tried starting a jewelry business my senior year of high school I started yeah I started a jewelry business it was called grounded earth jewelry 
and it was like crystals and things like that. Um, I think I tried doing that on Etsy or something. I don't, I don't really remember what happened with that. And then I changed the name of it to what the hell did I change the, <laughs> the hippie, the hippie store? I don't know, something like that. And then I actually used that business as my final, which was amazing because there was this one class that I did not think I was going to pass my senior year and I needed to pass that class to graduate. And the final was to create a PowerPoint or a presentation of a business that you would start. And it could be a fake business or just like everything that you would sell in the business or whatever. And technically I did have a business at the time. So all I did was make a PowerPoint on my freaking business. I had images, I had all of this. And they were like, is this real? And I was like, yeah, this is my real business. Uh, which was, I, that actually felt pretty freaking cool. And I was dressed like a hippie and everything during the presentation, but that's how I like, I dressed regularly. Um, and then, I don't know, that just, I, I stopped that. And then after high school, I was really, I was really grinding. So anyways, going off from that, I, I was always trying to start my own business. I started a couple, even after I left home, I tried starting this super sick brand. Um, and it could have worked and I intend to relaunch it eventually in the future if it's even trendy then. Uh, but it would have been really, it would have been really good now. Like now the trend is insane that it could have done really well. The only thing I didn't want to do was social media management. I hated social media at the time and I did not want to spend hours on social media trying to market my brand. So I just gave up on it completely. I had business cards, I had a website. I literally designed this website so cool. It was the, probably the coolest website you'll probably ever go on in your entire life. It looked like a MySpace page kind of. Um, but anyway, so I was always trying to start businesses and I think this is why I've really decided to go ahead with it. I never thought of it. I never considered like, oh, I'm gonna start my own business. Like that was never a future plan that I had. It was just always something that I was doing. Like it was never like, oh, when I get older, I'm gonna have my own business or I'm gonna have my own company. I never thought that ever. I thought I was gonna be a dancer at some point. I thought I was gonna be a, ne a neurologist. Um, I thought I was gonna be, I, was, I thought I was gonna be so many freaking things, a famous singer, um, a model, uh, I don't know, a bunch of random stuff, a rapper at one point. Uh, I thought I was gonna be a whole bunch of stuff. I never thought I was gonna own a business. I never aimed to own a business, but I was always trying to start businesses naturally. Like, I don't know why, I just wanted to, I don't know, I didn't want to start my own business. It was just something I always did. So. Moving to my senior year of high school. Now my entire year, or my entire time in school, I intended on going to college. Since elementary school, um, my, my colleges that I wanted to go to always changed depending on what I wanted to be. So again, like at the point I wanted to be a neurologist, I was looking into uh, a lot of good medical schools, of how long I had to be in school for, when I wanted to be a dancer, I wanted to go to Juilliard. That was my main college, Juilliard. I've always wanted to go to Juilliard since I was super young. I always wanted to be a dancer. Um, then at one point I wanted to be a video game designer. I wanted to go to Full Sail University, if you guys know what that is. Um, I wanted to be a horticulture person. Like I wanted to grow weed, so I wanted to go to like uh, some school called Amsterdam or like, I don't know, Oak. It was in Oakland, it was like Amsterdam or something like that. Um, so many, so my college has always changed. So I, but I always intended on going to college. And then my junior year of high school, I, if you guys don't know, I moved around a lot. So all throughout my school, I've went to many elementary school. I've been to many middle schools. I've went to many high schools. Not to say like hundreds of thousands, but I did go to like the fair share. I didn't go to just one high school. I didn't go to just one middle school. I didn't go to just two high, high schools. I didn't go to just two middle schools so or two elementary schools. So I moved more than like the average person who basically doesn't move at all. And I think around the time I got to my junior year of high school, I was so fed up with moving. And it wasn't more about moving. It was more about like, I don't know. It, I, I don't know what happened, but I know that my junior year, which was the last school that I ended up going to, um, that school was like a little ghetto. I don't wanna say a little, but it was in basically Queens, Brooklyn. 
and it was my second New York City school. I mean, I went to one school in Yonkers, which is not technically New York City, it's in Westchester County, um, which is kind of like a New York City school, but I love that school. And then my first, my first school ever, my first elementary school, because I was born and raised in the Bronx, which is in New York City, that was my first New York City school. And then my last school was a New York City school, which was in Queens of Brooklyn. And that school was a little ghetto and it seemed like the teachers didn't care. Like they were setting everybody up to go to community college. Like it had a super high dropout rate, like one of the highest dropout rates. And it wasn't motivating at all. It didn't make me want to go to college. It didn't make me want to pursue anything with education. And then mainly it was a combination of that and my junior high school is when I actually really truly woke up to the ridiculousness and of basically of what this government is and the conspiracies that are actually true and not really conspiracies, um, the tyranny that's low-key happening, um, the lies that we have been told mainly in the educational system, but also what they have refrained from showing us in the educational system. I completely just, I was like, wow, this is complete BS. There's no way I'm going to pay thousands of dollars to go to college just so they can feed me more BS. Like, I'm glad I have the option to choose no to college. So by junior year, I was unmotivated from school. I was completely disgusted with the education system and the lies that I had been eating up all this time. And I was just like, you know, I'm definitely not going to college. So my junior year, I decided I'm not going to college, even though my entire life, I swore I was going to college. Um, so then I kind of didn't really care about what I was doing in school. I just wanted to pass high school. Um, by the time my senior year came, I wanted to drop out of high school because I was just so fed up with school. I was like, this is ridiculous. This isn't providing me any sort of value. I'm not going to use any of this in life. I could be making money right now. And I told my mom, I was like, look, I want to drop out of school. Like I could be making money right now. This isn't going to help me at all in the future. I could stop school right now, start making money and save for my future basically not save for my future but start working on what i really wanted to do which i had no idea at the time um and then it was this whole thing with the school i actually did try dropping out but the school since it has such a high dropout rate that they literally like threatened us <laughs> that to not drop out so i had to graduate high school and it's funny because my friend who went to that school too she told me later on that the same thing sort of happened with her that I think she also tried dropping out and they they made it like this really big deal. And it's because it, it'll just keep increasing the dropout rate. And I think the school will close if too many people are dropping out or something like that. So I think they were trying to stop that from happening. And I think she told me like the inner details. Like she knew more than I did about what was happening with that. Um, so anyways, I ended up graduating high school. By the time I graduated high school that summer, like those last few months of my senior year, was when I really woke up to the law of attraction and manifestation and I realized that I can create my dream reality. At the time, I didn't know what that was. I just knew that I wanted to be extremely wealthy and I also wanted to be famous. I don't wanna be famous now, I just wanna be extremely wealthy. So I was trying to get, I, I was singing at the time, so I was trying to get into the music industry, as some of you may know. And I was actively going to all these shows and concerts and making connections with people and trying to record music and doing all this stuff and I was attracting a lot of circumstances that would bring me closer to this and it was just further engraving in my head like this actually works um so that year that summer that I graduated high school I was very famous rich driven all of that and practicing the law of attraction and then I had this very spiritual experience or awakening um, some of you may know, know the details some of you may not but what it was it was that the universe basically showed me that whatever I was aiming towards was very materialistic and very egotistical and it was not going to provide me with the spiritual value that I truly wanted and I was already on my spiritual journey but I kind of got lost in the sauce of the physical and the combination of the spiritual and I moved more towards creating the physical instead of focusing on my spiritual and by when that happened I was like I'm leaving New York City this is when I left home I was 18 and I was like there's no way I could stay in New York City it's too egotistical it's gonna keep drawing me back into 
the material and I don't want that. I want to escape the material. I want to just indulge in my spiritual essence, right? So I left home. I had a little bit of money. I had basically almost no money. Um, and the money that I did had have, it came from, because I didn't work a job after high school. After high school, I didn't have a job. Um, I didn't have a job most of the time that I was in school. I only worked at Chipotle a few shifts, I think my junior year of high school, the beginning of my senior year. Like the summer after my junior year, the beginning of my senior year, I worked at Chipotle a few times. That was my first paychecks, one of my first paychecks. And I think I spent it on like dumb stuff. Like, and it wasn't anything, it was like a hundred something dollars. And I was like, a oh, hundred something dollars? Like that was like the best thing ever to me. Like a free hundred dollars, it felt like. Um, so anyways, the money that I did have when I left home was actually from more towards before I left. I ended up working for Postmates and this is when Postmates first started. So some people were doing it, some people weren't like there, but it was active and I was doing it on my bike. So I was riding my mountain bike through New York City, up and down New York City, like across the Brooklyn Bridge to freaking the financial district all the way to like the Upper West Side. Like I was all over New York City doing deliveries on Postmates. And I think that the most I had was almost like $700. And I only did it for, I wanna say like a month. I don't remember doing it for that long before I left. So I had like about $600. I spent like $100 on a ticket leaving home. And then I, I stayed at a hotel that night. So it was like another $100. Um, and then I had to buy food to eat because I have to freaking survive. <laughs> so it, it was like the money was like slowly depleting. I ended up staying with family friends um, who didn't charge me rent, but I still had to feed myself. I still had to buy groceries and things like that. So that's what my money was going towards. I didn't have a job for a little bit for the first month or two that I first left home. So my money was like really depleting. Finally got a job. And then I ended up staying with somebody else where I had to pay rent, but it wasn't too much. So combination of like the money I was making, I was making good money because I was working all the time. So this first year that I left from home, now I'm 19, right? And I'm working a lot because now I'm saving up to go to California. And when I originally left home, when I left New York City, it was, it was to go to California. I was gonna like hitchhike across the country. It was a terrible plan. I was gonna hitchhike across the country to California. At that point that I would have reached California, I would have probably had zero dollars and I would have been screwed. So um, I stayed in Pennsylvania, which I had lived at before, for a year after I left home to save up money. And then when that year was over, circumstances happened um, where I left to California, I did, and it was with my boyfriend at the time. So he had to go to California for his own reasons, which was perfect because I was already going to California. So we left to California and I I think when I left there, I had like $600 again. I don't know where the hell my money went, guys. Like, I think it was, well, mostly it went to, no, I don't think it was 600. I had to have been over a thousand. But I spent, I think, 400 on my ticket, which is actually really cheap to go freaking cross country. But I had a lot of layovers. So I don't know. I saved up in this one year of going from basically zero dollars. In one year, I made almost like a thousand dollars. But then I was kind of spending it too. I was buying like dumb stuff. I didn't think I was going to go to California. I don't think I was taking myself too seriously. So I ended up spending it, like going to movies and things like that and like having fun or whatever. Um, you know, being 19 years old. So I left to California. Um, I want to say I had like a thousand dollars. I spent four hundred on my ticket, which left me with, I guess, six hundred dollars. I don't really remember the exact amount that I had, but I didn't have a lot when I came to California. Luckily, I got to stay with my boyfriend at the time's family, so I wasn't being charged rent. But that was only for I think a month or two, and then I had to move into a room where I had to pay rent. And at that point. Um, I had almost no money because I was spending money on food. Like they eat meat, so I couldn't eat what they were eating. I had to eat out more. Um, and yeah, I had to buy, I had to pay rent to go to a room. And then at the point that I finally moved, I had like $200 in my account guys. And I think I had to pay rent really soon again because I moved in in like the middle of the month. So it was like prorated. Um, it took me, I think, two weeks to find a job. Finally, this was my first job since moving to California. And then it, 
it worked. It was a job that I wanted. I was trying to really manifest. I was like, nope, this is the job I'm working. I'm not applying for any other jobs. And I luckily I got that job. So that held me down a little bit. But most of my pay was going towards rent. So I was eating basically, and this is a true story guys, and this is how the struggle is real. If you really want to do something, you know, I really wanted to be in California. I didn't know why. I didn't have any future plans. I just knew that I wanted to be in California and I was gonna stay in California and I wasn't gonna ask anybody for help because I chose to came out, come out here and this is my journey. So I was eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches a lot. I was eating spaghetti a lot. I think those were the only two things I was eating and salmon because I ate fish at the time. So salmon was the only thing that I would eat. And yeah, like really cheap food and I would eat the same things all the freaking time. Like, and then I would eat like uh, drink the leftover juice because I worked at a juice bar. <laughs> and that was what I was eating for a few months just so I can save money. And then eventually I had to leave where we were. We moved to a different room. Um, that was a bit more, but I got to switch jobs, which paid me more. So that was good. And then life was pretty regular at that point. I was, the amount that I was paying for rent was good compared to the amount of money I was making. And I could eat out sometimes. I could do this and go here and do things like that. So that was cool. I was making regular money. Like I was okay at that point. Now, when I got to that point, I felt like things were okay. Like I was I was doing it, right? I, I was living out here. I was surviving. I wasn't eating sandwiches all the time, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches all the time. Like I was actually living my life. And then at that point, I want to say things really changed um, at the point that me and my ex-boyfriend, the one that I went through like all those places with um, when we broke up. And that, like during the point that I came to California and then the point that we broke up, that was just like it sh it was a struggle for a little bit and then it got regular and then once it got regular there was at in my point in life there was time for an upgrade because i wanted more i in my life i always want more i want to do more i want to see more i want to be more and that's just where i was going so at that point knowing and i was still in my spiritual journey i wasn't actively doing anything spiritual i was reading and things like that, but I wasn't really doing anything. And I ended up getting my own apartment somehow. I remember reading about it, I think on Craigslist or something, and then I didn't think it was real. I thought it was a scam because it was too good to be true. And then it turns out it was the exact building next to my job that I was already working. And I didn't know that, I was just going for, I think I was on my break and I saw the same advertisement that I saw online on the building next to my job. And I was like, wait, is this the building? And then I checked the ad and I was like, oh, this is actually real, it's an actual building. And so I applied, but then I completely forgot about it. I was just like, man, let me just apply and see what happens. And I ended up actually getting the apartment. And I remember, moving into this apartment by myself because at this point me and my ex broke up and this was my apartment and it was in downtown los angeles and it was a really nice apartment and i remember sitting there like what the heck like what just happened back in 20 i was gonna say 2012 2016 the summer that i graduated high school that I was like super law of attraction manifestation my main affirmation and my man my main manifestation was i have my own apartment in los angeles and I remember forgetting about that and then re-remembering while I was sitting in my apartment in LA. I was like, did I just create, did I create this by accident? Like I was consciously trying to create it at some point, but then I forgot about it. And I think that's the key to manifestation is you set the intention and then you forget about it. Like you set the intention, work towards it somehow naturally, effortlessly basically, and things will end up happening. You just leave it to the universe. And I com that's exactly what I did. Not on purpose, though. Like, I didn't like, okay, I'm just going to forget about it so that I could have it. Like, that wasn't it. I just literally forgot about it. And then it ended up manifesting into reality. And at that point, I realized, whoa. Like, I literally just end up where I wanted it. I ended up where I wanted to be without even trying but at the same time i did try because i did come out here i did save up money i did work a lot like i did but it was effortless like it wasn't intentional to get my own apartment in la so at that point i felt like i was on the freaking top of the world and 
I hadn't turned 21 yet. I was 20 years old. I had my own apartment in the heart of Los Angeles, across the country from my family, supporting myself, having my own apartment, supporting myself. And I wasn't broke. I had money. I was saving up to travel the world. I was saving money here and there. I was just like, I was living the freaking life. Not to say that I'm not living the life now, but that this is when like things really started kicking off for me. And I realized that I could really be on top of the world. And then I stayed there for, I want to say about a year. And then the pandemic happened and things started to backtrack. And I started to feel defeated because I was like, man, I got so far. And then look what happened. Like all this happened. And now look, I can't even, like, I don't have anything. I don't have my own apartment again. I was, I had roommates again because I had to say, I had to save all my money. I didn't know what the hell was going to happen with the economy or the world. Like nobody did. I lost my restaurant job, which was my main source of income. Um, I was basically making no money. I was trying to collect unemployment, which I've never done in my entire life. And this is what I'm 21 doing this 21 trying to collect unemployment getting like food stamps that was my survival thing food stamps like that freaking helped me out i wasn't spending money anywhere because i couldn't the only thing i was spending money on was rent and my money was depleting really fast because i had lost my main source of income even though i was making some money from the yoga studio job that i had just started um but that then the struggle was real again so it was like real it's really weird like things come in waves and i'm noticing that that and, and this is just life and this is the cycle of life too is that there's going to be ups and downs and when i first moved into my apartment down in downtown la by myself i was on top of the world i was on the peak and then again the pandemic happened i went all the way down to the bottom and not to say that that was all the way to the bottom because it could have been really worse than that and it really wasn't and i'm extremely grateful but to me, I felt like I was backtracking. And I remember reading a quote that says, sometimes you have to take two step or one step back to move two steps forward. And that was the main quote that motivated me. And it still motivates me to this day because you do sometimes have to backtrack and it doesn't feel great to backtrack, but it's gonna help you in the, in the long run in the future. And that's a, I think it's a really good thing to know to really know because at the point that I backtracked, I was just like, man, how am I ever gonna get back to where I was? And then I kind of started moving through those phases. Something happened uh, where the manager of the yoga studio left. So I ended up becoming the main manager. I was already kind of assistant manager at my restaurant job, which made me kind of qualify for this general manager position at the yoga studio which my pay went up, my hours went up because there was a lot more to do as manager. Um, and then, yeah, I I had to move out of my roommate's place. I had to move into another place that was sort of with roommates, but it was, um, it was way more expensive than it would be to live with actual roommates. Um, but I was working a good amount of hours, so I was able to do it. I was just trying to kind of figure it out it was kind of like a rocky phase where i was like okay i'm i'm getting there i'm just i need to find a good groove and then i ended up my boss sent me a link she thought it was a place with roommates but it was actually the apartment that i live in now she thought it was like just a room and i noticed i was like wait this is an actual apartment that i can possibly afford so i just applied literally like i didn't think anything of it again the same thing like my last time i didn't think i was like man let me just apply and see if i qualify and they literally called me the same day asked me for my information like they really wanted me to move in and at the time i had this really crappy hospital bill if maybe some of you remember it was like over six thousand dollars because i freaking broke out into hives if you guys remember the hive the hives episode the chakra scam episode where i was literally covered in hives as i'm doing the podcast episode i had to go to the hospital that day i literally almost died i was gonna go into what is it uh anaphylactic shock and i was i almost freaking died guys in the freaking hospital and that was for me overwhelming myself with trying to do so much. I had just become manager. There was so much stuff to do for the studio. And I was trying to live stream. I was trying to start my YouTube channel. Like I was trying to do a bunch of stuff at the same time and it overwhelmed me. And anyways, I didn't have insurance at the time because I didn't, nobody paid my insurance. I was supporting myself. I wasn't paying my, cause I didn't, 
I didn't care about going to the doctor. Like, I'm not sick, so I, why do I need health insurance? And it ended up screwing me. I had a $6,000 bill. I was like, how am I gonna pay off this bill? How am I gonna move? Like, how am I gonna afford anything with this freaking bill? And so that was kind of like another little downslope for me, even though things were starting to sort of get better. And then by the grace of the universe, um, the bill disappeared. I ended up getting financial assistance somehow, some way. I leave it to the universe. They took care of it. She took care of it. He took care of it. Um, and then I ended up getting this apartment. Um, and it was in, it's in a really nice neighborhood. And suddenly I was back on top. I have a really nice apartment in a really nice neighborhood. Because my last apartment was really nice. But the neighborhood was... I mean, it's in the heart of LA and downtown, but after a certain time, it gets kind of crazy. And even during the day, it's a little crazy. So I wasn't a big fan of the area, but now I'm in love with where I live. My apartment is amazing, even though I intend to move out once my lease is up. Um, but anyways, I was back on top. Then, yeah, that. and to, to say how I got here, it was just, circumstances it's circumstances and intention so like i knew what i was going to do and before i moved into the apartment while i was kind of still staying with roommates in a way and i was trying to find a way to get back on top this is when i decided to relaunch the writings of natalia now i always had the writings of natalia as a blog but at the more i worked as a manager at the yoga studio the more i realized how much i love managing and managing businesses specifically and i was learning a lot about business and i was learning about how much i love business and doing business and learning about business and managing a business and i thought why not start my own business again like try let's try it so i relaunched the writings of natalia as a business the same day that i moved into my apartment because that just felt right a new a new business a new house like i was on top again basically and then yeah i was working a lot at the studio we reopened for in person so i had a lot more hours i was making a lot more money um and things i was back on top basically how i got to the position of manager at my job certain circumstances my first job here in california was at a juice bar i worked at the front just selling the juices and they trusted me to become shift lead which would be to open the store and i started actually making the juices and it was perfectly fine i was doing a great job when i switched to my next job the restaurant job i had that shift lead thing on my resume to show that i'm kind of capable of um handling a bit more than the average worker that works there so then i ended up getting shift lead sort of assistant manager right and then the more I handled at the restaurant job, the more I qualified for my next job as general manager because she knew that I could handle the job. So that that's how I got to the job position that I ended up in. Shelter-wise, living-wise, I lived with roommates most of the time I was here. And then I ended up getting my own apartment by just applying and by kind of forgetting about it, trusting that maybe it could happen, maybe it couldn't. I didn't really attach myself to the outcome of what that would be. And I ended up getting that um, somehow, some way. And then with the pandemic, things kind of backtracked, which made me feel a little bit insecure about my actions and what I was doing, but it's all part of the process. There's all, there's always gonna be ups and downs. There's always gonna be changes and phases in life. And so I ended up living with roommates again, which I felt kind of bad about, but it was fine. It was okay. I was trying to save my money. It was smart at the time. <clears throat> So, and then the, how I got my own apartment the next time was more, again, chance. Like she sent me a link, she'd even know it was apartment. I took my chance and applied. Like I, I, for, I didn't even care about the outcome. I didn't care about getting my own apartment. Um, and then I ended up getting it again. So it's really, I, I don't wanna say chance, like I got lucky. It's not luck. It's you trusting yourself and trusting the universe that the universe will guide you and also having intentions. I, from the beginning, have always had an intention to be on top. And by, when I say be on top, it means be on top in my own life. What I, what I see being on top as, which is being financially free, being able to do whatever I want, being able to live nicely and comfortably. That's living on top for me and doing more and doing more for others. That's on top for me. I don't, 
I don't mean being the most famous person, having the most luxurious clothes and cars and things like that. That's not being on top for me. Being on top for me is doing everything that I want to do in life. Being on top, being on top of my own personal mountain, what I see that to be. So that's always been my intention. My intentions are never to stay where I am. It's always to do better, to be better, to attain better. So with those intentions, the universe knows that that's my intention. And I will always put action towards that. That's the thing. Like, I'm not going to just dream about it all day. I will always try to work to be on top, to always to be better and get better and do better. So with those intentions and with those actions and then not attaching myself to the outcome, these things happen. And this is how law of attraction actually works. And... This is how I've known to use it in my life and have come to realize that it actually works in my own life. So that's how I got where I am now, my job position, where I live now in this apartment. And also, again, I did mention that I relaunched the writings of Natalia as a brand before I moved to this apartment. And now I'm at the point. So this is kind of like the mini phase that happened within the space that I'm living now. So because of the um i don't want to say keywords here but basically the the health uh imposement the health uh what's the word i'm looking for um force forcing whatever the the government is forcing us to do right now basically health wise um chemical wise medicine wise and they're threatening our jobs with it basically because of that because of that situation my hours were completely cut in half i barely work at the yoga studio now and i live in this apartment that that job no longer supports so when that happened i kind of went back into this down phase sort of mode where i'm just like oh, i gotta figure out what i'm gonna do like i live in this apartment my lease isn't up i can't break the lease my job no longer supports me. I have to find another job. But be, within that phase that that happened, I thought that it would be okay, that I can work very little hours and just work super hard in my brand so that I can eventually just become fully self-employed and I wouldn't have to work the job anymore. I could just go all in on my brand and then I would only be making money from that, basically become self-employed. But... I don't know what happened within that. I don't know if like my intentions were off. I didn't put enough action in, but whatever it was, my financial situation depleted very fast within a small amount of time. And that sort of shocked me where I was just like, oh my God, like I have to do something. There, this is like an emergency situation sort of thing. So I ended up getting a second job and that's why I'm working two jobs right now. But in that phase, I felt like I went from on top to down really fast, even though I'm still in like this apartment, I still kind of work my job and things like that. Um, but it did sort of put me in this down spike. And then once I realized that that was happening and how my thoughts were changing and how, how I wasn't feeling so up there and you always have to kind of feel up there. You always have to feel like you're succeeding. You always have to feel like this. Uh, you always have to feel like you're achieving greatness that you're always moving forward and when certain circumstances happen they sort of make you forget about that they put you in a survival mode where it's like you have to make money you don't have enough you don't have this you don't have that you need to do more blah 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 and it makes you forget about your truth and what you are truly aiming for and how you are just moving through a phase and moving forward and once I became aware of that once I became that this was just once I became aware that this was just a phase I started to realize it and I was just like my essence never changed it was just this situation that made me think differently and once I became aware of that things started to move back up so now I'm like on the incline back up and we'll see what happens I mean I'm at the point now and throughout this entire journey around the time that I, I got my first apartment and I was living in LA I started really diving more into my spiritual practice and I had discovered hinduism i knew about it but i didn't really know about it and i found my basically soulmate when i got my apartment too like i found justin who's my boyfriend now and he is my entire life basically and i never thought that i would find somebody like that so within that i found like basically my soulmate i found my 
my spiritual practice again because for a year and a half mainly I wasn't doing anything spiritual for two years maybe I wasn't doing anything spiritual I knew about like I I knew I just wasn't actively practicing and I started diving more into my spiritual practice um, and then things just started kind of going up from there again phases kind of happen but my faith and my devotion I, I discovered bhakti during that time too uh, my faith really went up there because i realized the position i was in and i realized how much the universe had done and how much it was in how much it was in my life and i became very devoted and very devoted to god and the universe and that devotion has moved me and has kept me strong and has and continues to keep me strong but now I'm at the point in my life where even if I go through these declines, like the whole financial situation that happened recently, it made me nervous, but it didn't make me too nervous because I have faith in God. I have faith in the universe. And the reason I have this faith is because I've been through even worse declines and I've made it out somehow. So I know that these are just cycles of life. I know that these are just phases and I have faith that I will just go back up to the top because I know that that's how it works. That's how it's always worked. And I trust it. I trust the universe. I surrender all the damn time. Whenever I feel weak, I just surrender it because I know that that's not who I truly am. And I know that I'll move through this phase and I know that it's just something to teach me a lesson. So I've got to the point where I am now through intention through taking action and through having faith. I think that's the best way to sum it up is having intentions, taking action on those intentions, whether it be consciously or not, having true intentions, knowing what I truly want. And overall, even though some things may be specific, like, oh, I wanna be famous, oh, I wanna do this, I wanna do these little things, I wanna have a successful company, like the small things like that, but overall, the main idea is I want to be on top. I want to be successful and in my own idea of successful. I don't care about the riches. I don't care about, and you may say that like, oh, but you say you want a freaking Lamborghini and you want to be a multimillionaire and it's all play. This is all an illusion ultimately. And I want to play. I want to play. I want to play. I want to live this human experience the most I can live it. That's what I want to do. I want to experience everything. And I want to be able to do that. I want to have the ability to do that freely. Those are my intentions strongly. And the universe knows that. And I take action to move towards things, to move me higher, to make me more, to make me become better, to, I just act on the things that I want to, that I want to see an outcome in. And with that, I let it go, I have my intention, I take action, and I let the universe handle the rest, really. I have faith in the universe, and I have faith that no matter what I go through, I will always keep moving forward. I will always keep moving towards the thing that I want. The other thing is, I have really strong willpower. I have really strong intentions, and I have really, I have faith that I will accomplish what I aim to, but I also have faith in myself that I will not stop until I accomplish the things that I want to. So take away like, oh, I trust the universe or whatever. I trust myself that if I don't get what I want, I will keep moving towards what I want. I won't stop until I get what I want. And I don't say that in an ignorant way, like, oh, I'm going to have this and I won't stop until I get a blah, blah, blah. But sort of, it's not like I'm, I'm like, I'm not going to stop until somebody's dead or anything crazy like that like i'm not aiming towards anything ridiculous it's i'm not stopping until i achieve my dreams i'm not stopping until i live the life that i intend to that's how strong my willpower is my willpower when the willpower comes in it's again i won't stop if somebody tells me no i'm not gonna stop i'm gonna keep moving towards it because i know that there's somebody out there living the life that i want to and i'm not and i'm gonna do it until i get there because i know it's people do it all the damn time so why can't I and I know that with hard work with intentions and with strong willpower you can get anywhere and I know that I've always wanted to have my apartment in LA I've always wanted to live in California and I've been living here for four years now basically by myself and I've been doing it I've 
had my own apartment. I've seen the things that I've wanted to see here. I've done the things that I've wanted to do here. I know that I can do it because I've done it. I started with the intention of wanting to do it and I ended up creating it. So I know that if I set my intentions and I take action towards it and I have faith that I will get it because it has not failed me yet. And in knowing that, in truly knowing that, I can know that I want, I can have anything that I want. So, I don't know, that's just how I got where I am. I've gotten to this point of trusting myself and having this faith and having this willpower because I've seen the results in my life. And the more you see the results in your life, the more you see that it's true. The more that you see that this can happen for you. And once you truly know that and you see it, you don't doubt it. You can't doubt it because it's in your face. It's a fact. It's 100% a fact and true in your life. So you can't deny it. You can't doubt it. And I don't because I've seen it myself. I've experienced it myself. So my message to you and my point in sharing this with you, even though I'm not, I don't have so much to freaking show her. I don't have my Lamborghini yet and things like that. But know that I am, and this is why I'm telling you, like, these are my intentions. I intend to become a multi-billionaire. I intend to have, or multi-millionaire, whatever, I don't care. Like, just give me, <laughs> just give it to me. I intend on having a multi-billion dollar company. I do. I intend on having multiple businesses. I intend on being successful. And I intend on, I don't think I'll get a Lamborghini. I don't know. It depends on the future. I intend on having a really nice sports car and driving it. Yes, I do but i have nothing to show for it this second all you have is to hear me say this and i bet you i want to i want to put i want to make a bet with you i will put money down if you dm me and put money down on this bet i will do it <laughs> you guys don't trust me but i will bet with you that i everything that i've been speaking of that i intend to do i will have and i have faith that i will and I know that I'll achieve it because I'm not stopping until I do get it. I haven't yet and I won't ever. So my point again in sharing this with you is that you can have whatever you want. I just kind of shared with you the, pl the blueprint on how I got to where I wanted to be and how I'm going to where I want to be still. And I hope that this inspires you to go for the things that you want because you can have what you want you can absolutely have anything that you want and it's really up to you if you are going to take action on that if you are going to actually try to create that for yourself and to give you the tips the the main the main structure the skeleton of this blueprint of how i got to where i am and how i'm going to where i want to be is intention knowing what you want knowing who you are knowing what you want mainly taking action on that inspired action on that three leaving the rest to the universe not how you're gonna get there i didn't know how i was gonna get my own apartment in la but it just happened i had the intention that i wanted it i took action i applied i didn't know how it was gonna happen i didn't really have anything i don't have i didn't have credit at the time i didn't have anything to show for it but i ended up getting it anyway somehow so intention is number one two taking action number three surrendering the how to the universe number four having faith having faith truly trusting that you will achieve what you aim towards that's really i don't have a number five we'll leave it at four <laughs> Mostly faith and surrender. Leave the rest to the universe. Have faith that it will come as long as you are taking action, as long as you keep your intentions strong. And I guess number five could be have strong willpower. Trust yourself. Have strength in yourself. Know that you are capable of achieving anything that you want to. Don't stop. Don't get flustered or drawn back. Man, when I, lo left, when I lost my first apartment, like that, I... I felt like I wasn't gonna have my own apartment ever again. Like that's how dr dramatic it was at the time. I was like, man, how am I ever gonna go back up here? Like I could have let that stop me. I could have went back home to the East Coast and been supported by my family again. I could have stopped and said, you know what? Maybe this is it. 
maybe I've had my fun out here, <laughs> whatever people may think, like, this is it, you know, a little vacation, back to reality, back to real life, right? I didn't let that stop me. I go through the struggle. Like, when I moved out here to California, I was eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and spaghetti and salmon every day. And I didn't let that stop me. I didn't let anything stop me. I'm never gonna let anything stop me. That's the thing. So that should be the same for you. Don't, if something happens where it pushes you back, don't let that stop you. Keep finding ways to keep moving forward. There will always be a way to keep moving forward. So use that, leverage that and stay inspired. Know what you want. Those intentions will drive you forward. If you, it truly aligns with you and it's truly what you want, you won't stop until you get there because that is what you truly want. And if you truly want something, you will get it. You will move towards it. You will want to keep trying to get it because you truly want it that bad. So remember, intention, action, surrender, faith, strength. That's it. That's it. That's the that's the blueprint to how I've got to where I am and how I'm going to keep moving towards where I'm going. And maybe I may add more things to this list in the future, but just move towards your dreams, guys. This has already been a long enough podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a, that's my story, guys. That's how I am where I am now. And we'll see where this goes. Let's see what happens after I move out of this apartment. Uh, my lease is up in April we'll see what happens from there we'll see the adventures that have happened from there and we will keep doing this podcast forever who knows who knows <laughs> all right guys thank you so much for listening this has been another episode of third eye sifes um i appreciate you being here and sticking to the end if you have go ahead and hit me up let me know you listen to this episode let me know if i've inspired you in some sort of way maybe share what you want to work towards and maybe work with me i can help you release limitations i can help you move and propel you forward i can shoot you forward i can provide you with one piece of advice or something that will help you move forward i promise working with me will not, you won't regret it so just let me know let me know if this has inspired you um if you can, I really appreciate it. If you can give this podcast a rating on the Apple store, you don't have to be on a freaking Apple mobile device or listening to this on Apple podcast, but if you are, go ahead and give this a rating, a five-star rating if you really enjoyed it, or just leave a comment review of how much you liked it, how much it has helped you. I really appreciate that. That means a lot to me. You going on the writings of Natalia.com means a lot to me. Buying something from my brand, means a lot to me following me on instagram means a lot to me and just following my journey and listening to this podcast means a lot to me writing to me means a lot to me reading my blog means a lot to me just you engaging in my life and me knowing that i have inspired you in some way moves me and it really is what keeps me going so thank you so much for listening thank you so much for supporting me thank you so much for being here and being you and wanting to do better for yourself that's the main thing thank you for wanting to be better yourself this podcast is about personal development and growth and spiritual growth and you listening to this means you want to know more you want to do more and that that's a lot so give yourself a freaking round of applause i wish i had a button i don't have my soundboard anymore because i don't think i could do soundboards on this freaking program um, but I used to, I used to be able to, it's okay. It's better. I'd rather not have a soundboard than have a freaking episode that sounds trashy and bleep, 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 and me repeating things and all of that. So it's a sacrifice, small sacrifice temporarily. Um, so anyways, thank you again, uh, for listening and we will do this again next week. I appreciate you. I hope you have a wonderful, magical day, weekend, rest of your week. I hope you achieve anything, everything that you aim towards because you deserve it. You are worth everything. So I love you. Peace. Let's talk next week. All right. Bye.
Hari Om. This episode has been brought to you by the writings of Natalia.com. Jai Maa.